I was very interested to listen to your um, version of Slow Dancing in the Burning <laughs> as, as, as of course you would be. Uh, and I was, um, it was, I was really surprised at the first. You, you got okay. the, uh, you got the, that long intro. Instru in instrumental. Yeah. Guitar solo. Yeah. And then it's, and then I was, as I was playing it, I was fiddling about with some cables and plugs and stuff, getting ready for the meeting. Right. Then the vocals kicked in. And I thought, is that John Mayer? Uh, I actually thought initially it was John Mayer's vocals over the oh, top. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. honestly. And I thought, how's he done that? As he, as he had to do that with recording rights or whatever, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I actually thought it was John Mayer's vocals. Now, wow. you take that over however you want, but I'll take it as a compliment. I yeah, genuinely, yeah. hand on heart, thought it was... And, and then it's a, it, it was a few sort of 20 seconds. I was like, oh, no, it's not. It's... it's sure. I, can, I can hear his... <laughs> I can hear his voice now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the start of it, you know, I mean, the riff to Slow Dance in the Burn Room yeah. is... So iconic, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, you've got the reverb over the top, and it's yeah. pretty lush. And I like the first the first riff you did on it. You didn't. You gave a little bit of the riff, and then you you it's left a, a little bit out. And I yeah. thought it was nice. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah, I thought it was a a, a great version of the song. Yeah, ah, cool. Thank you very much. No, well, we 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 just did like a couple of days rehearsal go because we, we we I mean the reason it's called Three Nights Live is that uh, we decided to record in three different locations around the UK. Mm. And the idea was so that you've got three different versions of each song to choose the best one. But uh, as good as the recording engineers and the, and the kind of, you know, the guy who was going to mix it, a friend of mine, Wayne Proctor, uh, um, came to, you know, to set, help set the whole thing up. As good as they are, the, I don't know why, but you can't always pick, of course, you're going to play in three different locations, so the room's going to sound a little bit different. Hmm. But these three locations that we picked couldn't have sounded more far apart if we tried. So we ended up choosing one of the locations for the whole thing. And because it was, you know, it, not not one of the performances was perfect from start to finish, but the one that's on the album now it has it is the best overall of the three nights. Yeah. So, you know, there was people screaming at certain venues and shouting bits, hoping to get on the CD and this, that, and the other. But, but, and, and of course, in fact, some people still think they're on the CD when I know for a fact they're not. <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> whatever. You know, so it was just that. And we did a couple of days rehearsal to make sure that, you know, we weren't wasting our own time. Hmm. And, then, uh, and then, yeah, we, I went, went on it and, and smashed it, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's a great, a great album. So I was yeah, like, I mean, I, I listen to it really myself cool. quite quite often, you know, not religiously, but, you know, when I'm driving, I'll put it on like, and I still like it, you know. Yeah. So how, many, how does that go for a, a recording artist like yourself and, and, and touring and stuff and writing the song, putting all the work into it and then, put it out onto uh, a, a media. I mean, do you then listen to it much or, and how yeah, do you well, listen to it? Do you listen to it with, uh, are you analyzing things about yeah, always, you know, how the guitar sound, how, how, how does it go for you? Yeah, well, the thing is, you know, obviously you're writing and, and, and the thing with, with me is, is I, I can't write like nondescript, not non-important, just like, you know, writing about trees or whatever, you know, I, I have to, it, every song that I write means something to me at the time. And it sounds a little bit cliche, but I, I sometimes get so wrapped up in a, in my own song as I'm writing it or as it's nearing the end of writing, you know, I mean, I'll play it to death and, and, and then I'll say to my wife, you know, come on, listen to this. And she'll say, I've heard it like 300 times already. Yeah. And I'll say, yeah, but not with, not with this little bit. And she's like, you know, what little bit, you know, so... So then you 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 know you you do that and then of course and that's just in the demo process and then when you go in the studio I mean I've got my own studio so we do six and two threes really I, I try and I've never been good in the studio I find especially when time is money I find myself um, being under some kind of stress and, and I don't I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm not one of those guys that works well under stress to be fair so. I quite like the idea of having my own studio and especially like doing the vocals like, you know, my studio is set up, you know, it's not the biggest thing in the world, but, but certainly for the last few albums, all the vocals on those albums have been done in my own studio and then sent to wherever it's going to be mixed or whatever. 
And so a lot of the time, and a, and a lot of the time I've been uh, involved in the mixing process. So by the time the album actually comes out, you're probably, you know, not far off a hundred or 200 listens. Yeah. Per song, you know? And so you can also get a little bit like fed up with it. And you have to, sometimes you have to take a break because you, you, you find, especially when you're mixing, you find yourself thinking you heard something that wasn't there or thinking that you heard something in your last mix that you did last night before you went to bed. And it turns out that when you put it on the next day, it sounds horrendous because you've, your ears are blown for the day, you know? Mm. But um, to quote John Mayer, funny enough, he, he said, uh, he, and, I, and I try and try and do this myself, I do struggle with it, but he said, he, he said you have to kind of like, uh, think of it think of an album as, as little kids so you do your thing you do your nurturing you get to a certain level a certain um and then you can release it into the world and then you have to kind of like let it go you know let it do its own thing whether it falls you know becomes a great success whatever it might be mm. you have to let it become its own entity mm. and i sometimes struggle with that a little bit towards especially the letting go bit you know and then but I'm, I'm getting better on it. And then I, I do go back and listen. And the, th the funny thing about it is, is that six months later, you're, I'm, I'm, I think everyone does. I, I guess they do. You're always going, ah, I should have done that bit there. Or, yeah. should have, you know, that, you know, that little bit or, you know, and, you know, but at the time, and, you know, occasionally sometimes when you're recording, you do settle, settle. You know, and you're a little bit like, oh, I've done this solo 200 times now. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just, just put that out. That'll, that's it. I'm not doing it anymore. And then six months later, you're like, I should have done that solo once more, you know? <laughs> so there is that. Um, the only thing, I mean, the as, as, it sounds a bit conceited, but the only thing I don't really second guess myself on it is, is, is vocals because um, I, I, I'm a, I think I'm a singer first and, and guitar player second for, for, for the start. That's interesting. Uh, I don't have to work. I've always said that. I don't have to work at all to sing. I literally could get up at four in the morning, having had two hours sleep, and do a full gig. And, and my voice won't falter, generally, unless I'm ill. But guitar playing, you know, is, is one of those things where uh, you're learning new bits, you're stealing other things, you're doing this, that, and the other. And I, and I kind of found, with vocals, I never, I never did. I think... When I was 14, 13, 14, I started off singing some stuff at school. Like, I think my very first song was Christopher's Lady in Red, believe it or not. <laughs> but by the age one of... One of the first guitar songs I learned. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> yeah. wow. Well, it got me a lot of attention, I can tell you, when I was 14, 15. But, but from a guitar point of view, um, no, from a singing point of view, when I, when I was 14, 15, and getting on to 16, by the time I hit 16, I guess, 15, 16... I had a voice like Joe Cocker, well, like Joe Cocker, but with a gravel, like I have now. Yeah. And it's just the only thing that's changed since then and now is it's become richer and deeper and, and less uh, innocent sounding, you know. And, but I've had this voice for 30 years almost. Mm. So, but with guitar playing, you know, like I've said to you before, you know, the amount of hours or days or weeks, my, my, my parents must have heard me not quite making the Gary Moore notes upstairs and not, you know, and I used to come home from school, drop my bag, go upstairs, put the put the amp on, put the guitar on, put the Gary Moore record on as loud as I dared without my dad going crazy, and do my best to try and bend, bend the notes and play whatever I could. <laughs> yeah. And and I and I can even hear myself now thinking sometimes I definitely didn't get anywhere near those those bends. So it must have sounded like an alleyway of cats at times. I, 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 there's a, uh, an interesting well. Uh, a story I have um, about that you, when you're younger and you're playing in your bedroom and stuff like playing the songs and stuff and you, your parents are downstairs and uh, I, I, there's um, cream, uh, cocaine. Uh, I, whenever I hear that song now in that recording, there's a certain part in the song where I can actually hear my mum's voice bouncing <laughs> upstairs going, Steve! Yeah. <laughs> and every time I play the song, I can hear my mum say, it's just that little subliminal thing and it's... Uh, oh, it turn it down, turn it off. Yeah, <laughs> I can hear her voice still now. So I think we all go through that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, I mean, that's, you know, so that's, that's you know, it is nice, just going back to what your question was, it is nice to go back and listen. And, and I do go back, and sometimes I'll I'll go on a nostalgia day and go back to the very beginning and, and start mm -hmm. listening to 
some of the very first albums that I wrote. Yeah. I'm thinking, wow, you know, intro. I, you know, that, that's the thing is that if an album, a CD or writing is is uh, it sounds a cliche again, but it's basically a snapshot in time. And if you don't, if my albums don't show um, either a mature progression or a more a mature understanding of whatever you know it is over the years, then I don't think I'm. You know, we never stop learning. That's what I'm saying in the music world. We never stop Absolutely. learning. But I think if we, if my albums start to sound either the same, or I run out of stuff to talk about, or you know, that it doesn't, sh- then, I, then I guess I'm, I'm, I'm done. You know, there's no mm. more moving forward for me. Mm. Um, but I suppose you know, is it is it that you, you, I mean, that with the new guitarists and these new artists coming out, I mean, you know, so I mean, is it a case that you you, you sort of put that you've got your you put your albums out there, you write sort of music, and do you get to a point where you are sort of uh, maybe running stale on ideas and maybe there's somebody else, somebody new comes out or you listen to a new album by a new artist. So are you influenced by new stuff? Yeah, absolutely. But I, I, I do my absolute utmost to not be influenced by anyone um, on kind of like my level, you know, to, to, I mean, I listen to everyone. I listen to Ainsley, I listen to Ben Paul, I listen to the Nimos, I listen to Alan, you know, all of these blues bands and, mm. you know, all of these people. But it's, I, I, I find, um, I find, I don't, it sounds really terrible to say, but I'm not inspired by them, you know? Mm-hmm. So sometimes I'll listen to an album and, 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 and I, I, I don't do the plagiarism thing. So I don't go, oh, I'll just change that a little bit and I'll call it mine mm-hmm. now. But what sometimes happens is that I'll hear a, a, a groove or a line or a, a guitar sequence or whatever. And I'll think, ah, if I was doing that, I wouldn't have gone there. I'd have gone here, there, here, and here. Mm. So what does that sound like for myself? And then change a few, you know, and then, and then that will inspire me to, to do my own thing from maybe listening to someone else. Mm. But, and, and, but yeah, quite often, and it has changed. I mean, it goes backwards and forwards, but my method of writing sometimes goes that the lyrics will come first and then the, and then I've got music to it. Mm. But of late, it's been the other way around. It's been like, you know, musical ideas have come to me and then I've, and then I've had to sit down and kind of like create a, 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 an atmosphere and, and what I want to talk about in that song. Yeah. But there's a band, I mean, you, you may or may not have heard of them. If you haven't, you should really check them out. They're called the Brothers Landreth. Now, you can call, you can Google the Landreth Brothers or the Brothers yeah. Landreth. And they're just, I mean, it's a bit country, which is what you were saying before. Hmm. But from a guitar player, I mean, from, just just do yourself a favor and check them out. I mean, I'll I, check them out. I'm absolutely blown away by them. So much so, within a few months of hearing them, we, me, I bought tickets to me and my wife went to go and see them in, in Holland. Funny enough, they were, they were American guys, but they were doing a tour. Unbelievable. Just off the charts vocals. You know, uh, guitar playing is just something else. Like mm-hmm. slide and normal. It's a cross between Derek Trucks and I don't know who you can say, but just epic guitar playing. So. Mm-hmm. I've listened to most of their albums now, in fact, all of their albums now, and, and it's a new kind of groove and a new way of thinking. It's got me in a different way of thinking hmm. uh, for the time being. So so my some of my new songs that I'm writing or working on now um, are are influenced in that, you know, because of those guys. Yeah. And uh, when you go into the studio and you, you're, you're recording and stuff and the, the effects, are you using your your own effects, your own, your own body, using stuff that's on Pro Tools? Or yeah, or I'm generally using all my own, and my own effects, but occasionally, <laughs> just one quick story, I think in my, sec, my last studio album, uh, which is Leave Your Heart at the Door, um, we were recording and I was in, I was doing the, the guitar solo or something, I can't remember now, and in, in the control room, we set all the amps up, turn it up so it's crazy loud. And uh, as the, um, as we were playing it, the, the, the sound engineer goes, you know what you need? You, we've got one of those old, like 60s reverb tanks, you know? And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. Let's just try it on. So I put it on. I was like, yeah, okay, this is great. And then, as the as I got to the end of the solo, I think the solo was playing out, or it comes. I can't remember what song it was, 
but it was like the last time I was like, this is the last take, I'm over it now, we're going to do this. And just as the song was fading out, like uh, you play the last few notes and it starts to fade out, he started, I mean, this is the 60s, he starts kicking the reverb tank, so it's like <laughs> cracking, that. Like, I said, what are you doing? Leave it, leave it, it'll sound great. It's on the album now. You know, and I was like, I would have never, he's just kicking this reverb tank, because it's obviously spring reverb, and it's the old Fender thing, I think. And I was like, okay, well, whatever. If, if you think that, uh, if you think that fits, then. So sometimes, you know, even other people do things, and you're like, well, yeah, okay, we'll go with that. So, so that's. But generally, I, I do try and make uh, in the studio with my own effects, really.